Good morning and welcome to today's webinar, a new topic for our series, Right Sizing and Downsizing in 2022, presented by Ms. Karen Lawler and Ms. Donna Weaver, Realtors and Senior Real Estate Specialists with the Wendy Slaughter Team at Elevate Real Estate Brokerage. My name is Jeff Stauffer, Community Relations Director with Elville and Associates, and I'll be moderating today's presentation. So, how this will work today if you're new to our webinars, if you are, Welcome, we're glad you're here. And if you're a returning attendee, welcome back as always. So you as the attendee are in listen only mode. However, as always, if and when you have questions, please note them in the questions panel on the right hand portion of your screen or use the chat feature. And we will take all questions throughout the presentation and leave time at the end of this morning's presentation. Your questions really help the presentation and add value, they help others learn. So please don't be shy in posing your questions at any time. For our professionals on today's webinar, for CFPs, CPAs, and others, you may receive one continuing education hour for attending today. So per my attendance records requirements, please email me your ID number if I don't have it already. And for CFPs only, I also must have the last four digits of your social security number as soon as possible so I can submit your CE hours for approval. Everyone will also receive a post-webinar feedback email right after the presentation, and we ask that you please just take a couple minutes to fill out this simple survey to offer us your feedback about the presentation. And as always, we read and value every comment. So here at Elvon Associates, through planning and elder law techniques, our attorneys work every day with families and their loved ones with the ideals of client education, collaboration, and compassion in mind. And we're always available for consultations, to discuss your family's needs and look forward to being a resource to you in any way. So with all that being said, I have the true pleasure of introducing today's presenters. Presenting will be Ms. Donna Weaver, a realtor and senior real estate specialist serving both her clients and her community. Donna always goes above and beyond in everything she does, whether she is carefully guiding her clients through each step of the buying or selling process or volunteering to help make a positive impact in the community, you can always count on her to put you and your best interests first. As she says, quote, I truly love being a realtor, but it's not just what I do, it's who I am. Also presenting is Ms. Karen Lawler, who is also a realtor and senior real estate specialist. She has worked with top regional and national home builders, as well as premier realtors throughout Maryland to stage thousands of homes for sale. She has been chosen to design and to design spec model homes for new construction sales. Karen keeps current on education and interior design to evolve with the changing trends and top selling features. So Donna and Karen, thank you for being here today. We appreciate your time and thank you for all you do for the community. I know that you're very involved in the communities that you serve, which we appreciate. And I will turn it over to you. Thank you. Great, thank you. Um, we really appreciate you having us here today, Jeff and uh, we hope to share a little bit of information about what's going on in the current real estate market um, and give you some information on downsizing and moving. Awesome. Um, so we just wanted to tell you a little bit about our team. Um, we've been together for 13 years now. Um, and Donna and I have both lived in Howard County for about 17 years. Um, and this just gives you um, an idea about um, our referrals and how we get business. It's typically um, our, our previous clients refer us to friends and families, and we're really grateful um, about the way we get our business. Absolutely. I would say that's probably one of the most thankful statistics um, and I'm honored because you know when our clients have a good experience they speak for us and they tell their friends and family and um, you know so 91% of our business comes from those referrals. And this slide um, just shows you our average days on market. So we're pretty proud of the fact that um, we are able to beat the average days on market in Howard County. And as we go through this presentation, we're hoping to explain to you a little bit about our process and how we achieve that. 
Um, so first we wanted to talk about what's going on in the market right now, because as you've heard, it's, it's a little bit crazy. Um, and then we'll get into some key steps of downsizing your home. And then we'll tell you a little bit about our platinum plan, um, the program that we have, which includes a lot of partners to help you through this process. And I'll just speak a little bit about this first chart um, because this is the one, John, I was telling you, we just had updated this this morning. Um, and I think that this is amazing just to look at and spend a little bit of time on um, because it shows you that um, the inventory uh, all over Maryland, not just in Howard County, although it's a very similar graph, has just gone down drastically. Um, it, as you can see, for whatever reason, um, inventory was uh, was way up in 2020. Everyone decided to sell, um, buy investment properties, buy beach homes, um, and then you know we took a big dive. It went up a little bit, but if you look at the graph right now, and um, currently in April, <laughs> that that's a steep decline in inventory. Um, so it's good if you're a seller because there's not as many houses on the market to compete with, but it's a little bit challenging if you're a buyer. Um, so we're gonna talk about how um, this trend affects you as both. Yeah, um, so I can, I like to tell stories so I can give a little bit of a story um, in, in my world right now with some of the sellers that I'm working with. Um, recently, I'll give two quick stories. Um, recently, I had a little split level in Columbia that we put on the market, and within the first three days, we had 15 offers and over 50 showings, and the home sold for 50000 above list price. So, um, you know, I also had a townhouse that never went live on market. Um, the buyers bought, you know, put an offer in sight unseen. Um, and my sellers decided to accept it because they had young kids. They didn't want people through the home. Um, and that also went 50,000 above. So um, not that every house will do that, um, but um, that just gives you a sense of what's going on in the market right now. Right. And um, also, as you can see from these numbers here, with the inventory being down 40%, um, it kind of shows you how that average sales price has gone up um, 11% because what's happening is, um, you know, with the very little inventory, listings are getting multiple offers. And with those multiple offers, everyone's trying to bid out the other person. Um, so as that happens, then the, the comps go up. And so now values are rising. And one example, just to, just to show you how crazy it is, um, I had sold a couple condos, uh, and I, I work in Ocean City too. And in this one community, they were going um, in the low fours, low four hundreds. And two years later, now they're they're a hundred thousand dollars more. Um, so this is what's happening in the market: that the values are rising very quickly. Um, and that's what we're here to do: is kind of help you guide through the guide you through the craziness on both sides as a seller and a buyer. So, right, so talking about the stats of inventory being low and the prices increasing, um, I think the, one of the messages I wanna get across is if you plan to sell anytime soon, um, you really need to have a plan of action as to where it is you're, you're going to move to Maybe you have a second home, you know, maybe you're downsizing to uh, a 55 plus community. Um, maybe you're, you know, going into assisted living. Whatever that is, you really have to have that plan set forth ahead of time. So the earlier you, you start thinking about where you're going to move before you sell, the better. That's right. So Donna, we, um, um, Donna and Aaron, we have a question. Oh, yeah. um, actually, a couple that are popping in here. Yeah, mm -hmm. Now's a good time. <clears throat> Perfect. So the question is, how is the market if you want to buy a smaller new home, but rent for a profit and hire a property management agency? Any feedback on that? Um, 
explain can you repeat that i, I don't know karen sure. I, I, i'm trying to understand there's a question well, yeah there's two parts of it so let's yeah. take so, that part how, by part. How, how is the market if you want to buy a smaller new home but rent for a profit and hire a property management agency i hear a lot going on in that question um buying a new home new says new construction to me um are, are do they mean new or do they mean resale and it and yes can you rent your home out um and can you hire a property manager to manage that property um during the time you're renting it absolutely all of those things are possible but it's going to depend upon your financial situation um whether you're going to be taking out a loan um you know where where are you in your financial space in order to do that um what's your price point um how how much are you willing to spend to have a property manager manage your property there's a lot there are a lot of questions in there um you have to understand what a property manager does um they have contracts they have certain you know um things that they want to provide for a service, for a fee. Does that fee make sense to you? Um, what's your price point looking for something new? Are you planning to build um, or are you looking at a resale? Again, there's I, there's such a, a wide range of questions that I would want to ask, but those things are possible, absolutely. Right, so, um, and then she um, says that the uh, rent rental for the profit would be for the older home that she currently lives in and the rental would be an income generator within a trust so just as a aside there so okay well thank you for the feedback there um, again always um, Karen and Donna are resources and uh, we'll provide their contact information I assume that'll be um, at the end and I'll yeah. provide that in um, provide that to you in our a follow-up email that I always send out uh, at the end of our presentations as well. So uh, the other question we have here, um, which uh, we always appreciate, uh, is this trend projected to continue or are rising interest rates um, going to impact this in the future? Yeah, um, I, I, we think, you know, of course we don't have a crystal ball, but we think, you know, when we've talked to lenders and other, you know, experts in the field, that the interest rates will go up, um, but we don't think that they're going to go up drastically. But we do think that the fact that they are going to go up um, will help soften the market, um, so it won't be as crazy as it is right now. That's what we're hoping. Okay. I mean, the trend, you know, is that as interest interest rates rise, it will push more buyers out of the market, um, but and, and when sellers come on, the inventory may improve so that the increase in prices may not rise as drastically as they have there, been. There won't be so, many, so, so much competition for one listing. In fact, one of our team listings um, just last week, um, I believe they got 31 offers, right? On, Wendy's listing, they had 31 offers on one listing, which is really insane. So I think everyone's kind of hoping, not that people want interest rates to go up, but, but we certainly need the craziness to calm down. So are there any other questions? Competition too with um, new construction, as more new homes are built, I think that will also affect the market. Um, so, yeah. Okay, and uh, looks like we may have one more question that uh, just came in. Are there more cash offers than before? Wouldn't this negate higher rates impacting or slowing down the market? I'm getting more off. I'm I'm getting cash offers on a lot of the properties that I'm listing. Um, I think that you know I don't know why that is maybe because of the pandemic and people were able to save money because they weren't taking they weren't traveling they weren't you know spending as much but I, I do see higher down payments um lower 
amounts on the loans that they're taking out um, and more cash. So. Yeah, I think people, I think there are more cash offers right now because buyers are trying to be competitive with their offers. So if they know they're going to be one of 31 offers, then they're going to, you know, sometimes you can borrow money from yourself um, from an account that you have and then make your offer a cash offer rather than a loan, which makes your offer stronger um, because it's not always your offer price that's going to get you the house. There's a lot of terms that is going to make your offer stronger, such as cash, um, waiving a home inspection contingency, waiving an appraisal. Um, so if, if you are getting a loan, you can't waive your appraisal um, necessarily. However, if you, it's a cash offer, then that's not an issue. So it's one less thing that the um, seller has to worry about as far as a hiccup in the process. So okay. if that's possible for you, if you're able to be a cash buyer, um, that's going to help you get the house you're, that you really want. It's one piece of an offer that can be compelling to a seller because they don't have to wait for the financing. So it removes the financing contingency and often the appraisal contingency when people come in with cash. Um, but like Karen said, there, there are other contingencies as well that appeal to the seller, um, you know, such as, you know, as is inspections or, um, you know, removal of inspections, which is crazy in my opinion, but people are doing it, so. Okay, great. Well, thank you for the um, great questions and the feedback, and I think we'll move forward for right now. Okay, great. All right, so when downsizing your home, I think that the first step um, to me is the most daunting and overwhelming for most people. Um, you know, you look around the house that you've lived in for 30, 40 years, however long it's been, even 10 years, and it just all becomes, to me, like a standstill. And a lot of people that I work with, too, because they're not sure what they should keep and pack and take with them. And of course, as we know, it's very hard to part with things and things that we've cherished. You know, what are we supposed to do? Who's do we donate those? Do we throw them away? Do we sell them? Is what we have worth anything? Um, so we have partners in place that, that are going to help you with all that. We have, you know, organizers, we have consignment companies, um, all of all of these people are going to help you. That's part of what our platinum program is, is to get the people together, the key people together to help you achieve this process. And like I said, for me personally, this is this is the hardest part. Um, we do have a tip though, when you are packing, once you get to that point where you've kind of cleared everything out and, and decluttered and figured out what you're taking with you, um, to pack everything neatly in the same size boxes and label them and you could store them you know, neatly in an unfinished area, whether it's in your basement or in your garage around the perimeter, um, because when buyers are coming through their house, when they see that type of organization, it's going to give them peace of mind that you have taken care of the systems in your home and the larger things. Um, so they have less to worry about that, you know, and, and confidence that they're acquiring a home that was well-maintained. Well yeah. Um, so I just want to say, I mean, I, I wish that I had the resources. I wish I knew then what I know now about having resources to help with organizing and decluttering and, and even making you know small improvements or renovations because um, I, my mom passed in 2006 before I got into real estate and I had two young children had to fly to Florida. I was the executrix on the um, estate and it was very emotional and I really had no idea where to begin the journey. So, um, yeah, I mean, being able to provide those resources to those people that are looking to, to downsize and, you know, declutter, I think is, is huge. Mm -hmm. And we have partners that, um, I have one, <clears throat> a house that I sold in, uh, Columbia, the daughter, she lived in New York and she was handling the whole process for her dad and we had one company come in and they were able to do everything they were able to go through everything in the basement sort it figure out what to donate pack sell um so 
you know, we do have a one stop shop for that kind of thing to refer to you if that helps. Step Absolutely. two, um, deferred maintenance. This is very important here. This is, um, you know, we recommend when we first come into your house and we meet with you and we talk to you about listing your home, um, you know, we're going to have you kind of look around and, you know, whatever you know that needs to be fixed. Maybe there are certain things that you've been putting off because you can live with it. Um, this is the time now that you want to take care of those things that you are aware of. Um, you know, the, the less that comes up in a home inspection, the better. Um, and also as people are, are going through, they certainly um, don't want to notice things like, for instance, um, let's say for whatever reason, there's a, a stain on the ceiling, whether there was any ever a leak or anything like that, you know, you might want to get that painted so people don't think that there's anything wrong with it. Um, pressure washing your house, uh, the siding outside, the windows, making them sparkling clean. Um, that's also going to help a lot of light in and give a better impression to your buyers. Um, you know, drilling down to cosmetic things. If you look around and you see that you have maybe different colored outlets, outlet covers, um, and maybe they're, they're cream and they look a little bit dingy. One inexpensive fix is to go around and change everything to a nice bright white and make sure that they're nice and clean. Yeah. Absolutely, Karen. You're so so good at that. You know, at seeing those those things as a stager and understanding it. Um, I just want to say every situation in my mind is different. Every client is different. Every property is different. Um, you know, some people want to sell their home as is, and they really don't have the means, or they don't have the money, and they don't see the need. Um, you know, I totally respect the client and try to meet them wherever they are at. Um, but I can say pretty much in general, people want to make the most of the investment in selling their home. And when I take buyers out, the very first thing they ask is, how old is the HVAC? How old is the roof? How old are the windows? How old is the hot water heater? The major systems that run your home um, I believe should be in good working condition. They don't have to be brand new. They just have to be in good working order. Um, if there's deferred maintenance, um, you know, things that, you know, like um, a foundation issue or, you know, something safety related, I think it's important to get those things addressed before you decide to sell. And, you know, selling your home and pricing your home um, is is very connected, right? Um, because we're going to first look at the homes for our clients that want to sell and see what other properties have sold within a mile or two radius of your home that are in similar size, age, and condition. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think um, there are many factors like curb appeal, right, Karen? You know, the landscaping, making your home inviting, that's your first impression when somebody right. comes to the door. So. That's right, Donna. And I, I couldn't help but switch to the next slide on number three when you were talking about mm -hmm. um, looking at other houses that you're competing with, because it just it just flowed right into step three. Um, and I think this is one of Donna's listings that she had, um, and we can talk about <clears throat> updating the house. You know, that's usually a, a big question that sellers ask us is, you know, what should we update at this point in order to sell? And this is a great question, and it's a big question. Um, Donna, you want to talk about this listing? Sure. I, I can tell you a little bit about this. So, um, this was interesting. I mean, these were an older couple that were retiring um, and they're moving to North Carolina to be next near by their family. Um, they were older and they, they, they started the process by calling on contractors and trying to manage it themselves, but the contractors um, wouldn't show up and they were having a lot of trouble just trying to get you know, to declutter and move and get everything in order. So um, we have, you know, we offered them a resource and the resource we had is a, a contractor that could come in, um, make all the updates or renovations that they wanted to have done. 
because they wanted to maximize the sale of their home and they wanted to appeal to as many buyers as they could. Um, and they came in and they did these renovations. I think we did some bathrooms too, but the kitchen specifically. And this particular client was able to list their property for 40,000 above what they thought they could list it for. Um, but then they even made 50,000 above that when they went to, when they sold. Um, the beauty of this particular client and this renovation is they were not, they did not have to pay for it until time of settlement. So we were able to say, go take everything you need out of your home. Just we'll take care of everything else. Um, and it, it was the, taking away the stress factor for them was very important. Um, but it was a win-win all the way around. So, yeah. Right. So I think, you know, this touches upon what Donna had said before about the value of your home. So we're going to go in and, um, you know, I'm sure the, the picture at the top, when she first walked into that home, she did an analysis and presented it to the sellers and said, currently, this is what your house is worth um, compared to the other comps. And then, you know, we kind of have an idea what it's going to look like afterwards, the picture below. Um, and then she can then share that information afterwards. Um, another thing that we're going to do is obviously when you are doing a renovation like this, it's going to take a little bit of time. Um, let's just say it's a month just for sake of argument. Um, then we're going to go back in and we're going to do all that analysis again because a lot could have changed in a month. Um, there could be three other houses in your neighborhood that sold and they sold maybe the first one sold thirty thousand dollars more and then the next one sold fifty thousand dollars more so then the price of your house you know could have just gone up and then we'll know where to price that at that point and let me see if the next step is it pricing ah you guys are in a pricing isn't that perfect um, so believe it or not even though it's a very hot market you still have to strategically price your house um so there's a lot of different theories on that um you know i think one thing that we're trending more towards now um is to be care very careful to not overprice it um another thing that we saw recently in this market is um i think there was a house recently I, they listed it and they overpriced it and it sat on the market for 17 days which is a lot right now because houses are typically i would say the average days on market now is five days it'll be active through the weekend and then under contract on sunday or monday um and then this person had to reduce their price which is very rare in this market but that's what's going to happen if you overprice it so um, it's very strategic and you have to be very careful to price it just right to in this market, hopefully encourage those multiple offers. So people yeah. are waiving the inspections and they're waiving the appraisals. Yeah, I mean, again, I'm all about like every every client is different. You know, it all depends on what how you want to get your home ready and appeal to the market. Um, and then you have I always start with the end in mind. I bring in net sheets. I run net sheets. You know, a client wants to understand, you know, if I put in X amount to do a renovation or paint or do flooring or whatever it is that they do to get ready, um, you know, plus the commission, plus closing costs, you know, if I sell at X, what is my net? What do I take away from this sale? And I think, um, you know, that's what most sellers want. I mean, they want to understand, you know, what is, what am I going to pull out of this house and does it make sense for me? you know, to make these renovations. So, you know, every situation is different, but I do, I, I do want to say this, um, you will know when you put your home on market, if you've listed too high, because if you don't get any showings or you don't get the number of showings or you don't get offers, you know, the market speaks to you very quickly, especially in this market now. So, um, the last thing you want to do is really have to make a price reduction. Um, so we're here to kind of guide and consult, um, but ultimately it's always this up to the seller what they want to list their property at and what they feel the value is. But we, we bring you as much information as we can to make that educated um, choice. Right. And, uh, you know, we also wanted to mention that, um, you know, if, if selling isn't your goal at this time, 
and your goal is to age in place, you know, we have resources to come in and, and help you with that and, and help you modify your home, you know, maybe put in a chairlift or something like that um, and, and do some of these modifications for you. Um, that's part of the partners that we have in our platinum program. Um, so whatever your need is, just let us know and we can help you with that. Um, can I, and that's, yes. Yeah. Can I pose a few questions to you at this time? Absolutely. Okay, great. Um, can you talk about the pluses and minuses of selling a home empty versus staged? Yes. Do you want to take that first, Karen? Sure. So typically the house will show better, um, you know, staged and with furniture. However, sometimes, um, you know, kind of what's left doesn't maybe, um, it, it might distract from the home. You know, let's say the, the furniture is kind of old and outdated and it's really distracting from the home. Um, one of the things that we have that I would love to show you, I don't have it on a slide right now, um, but we do virtual staging and it looks so incredible. I mean, it doesn't even, it, it looks like a, a model home and we can put in furniture, wall art accessories. It's amazing. Um, and sometimes when you market a home that way, in order to sell your home, you need to have people in, you need to get showings. Um, and those pictures are critical. And so when we do the virtual stagings, when the house is empty, um, it gets people out to the house. And like I said, if the furnishings aren't really um, benefiting the space for whatever reason, it's better to show it vacant at that point. So it just really all depends on your space, your architectural features, your furniture, and we'll help you figure that out. I said, don't worry about that. And also when we go in initially, when I go in to see a house first or to stage it, I always tell people, don't move anything out yet. Um, of course, the things that you know you're getting rid of, then go ahead. But other than that, don't get rid of too much stuff because we might see things differently than you. We might move stuff to a different room, uh, move things around the house, move wall art around that, that might make sense. So you don't have to worry ahead of time about what you should do. We're there to help you do that. Yeah, I, I would say virtual staging has become you know, very popular because you know you can do tours and you can have people imagine what that space can be um, using virtual staging but physical staging when you walk into the house um, you know is also it warms it up you know it makes you feel like you, you you can get a feel for what it's like to be in that home when there's a couch in the living room you know or um, you know stuff in your owner suite, bed in your owner suite. So um, it depends, like Karen said, I think it depends on the locate, you know, the property itself. Where is it located? How quickly is, is this a sought after location? Um, you know, maybe you don't, you know, require a staging for that house because you know that it's probably gonna sell in, you know, two days on market. Um, but yeah, there's there. It depends on the property. It depends on your level of comfort. It depends whether we can also bring furniture in. Like I had a million dollar property in Bethesda, and my my seller wanted that home staged with physical furniture. So we brought furniture in, um, and that was a couple of thousand dollars for a, about a month or a month and a half. But the home sold in you know three days. So. Okay. Um, other question is, would you say that keeping a file on upgrades and renovations, et cetera, is a good idea when selling? And when is the best time to list a home? Is there a better time of the year or another um, over another? So I would say there's no better time to list than right now. <laughs> I mean, the market that we're in is is very hot for sellers because there's such low inventory. Mm -hmm. And as far as upgrade sheets, I mean, we do them all the time. So if you make any major renovation or updates to your home, we like to make sure that those are, uh, you know, we're marketing that to the consumer. So we even make those sheets available within the house. We leave them on the counter 
because we want to brag about all the great things that you've done to your home. And most importantly, we share that with the appraiser. Um, so when the appraiser comes in to value the home, it's all there in black and white. And we hand that to them and they can see how much you've spent for your kitchen, your bathrooms, your flooring, new roof, HVAC, whatever it is. And that really helps um, get your house to appraise for the contract price. Yeah, and okay. I think that's a really good point, Karen, because not every agent meets the appraiser. And I think I think it's a critical piece. You know, we run our numbers. We make sure that our seller's property is going to appraise. We'll bring comparables to that appraiser. You know, we're there to represent and to make sure that our sellers get the most they can for their property. So meeting okay. the appraiser is a big deal. And one last question, then we'll move on. Um, can you sell a house, quote, as is, if the house is in need of foundational work or other things that may not pass inspection? Absolutely. Yeah. When you're disclosing that the property as is, you're as a, as a seller, you're putting a disclosure together. So you're you're putting it all out there. So if there are foundation issues, you just disclose it at the time of listing your property. It's presented to the buyer before they write an offer. They sign off on it and you've disclosed all the inf information about your property. So as long as you disclose the information about your property, absolutely. And I think you have to remember that pricing it is going to be associated with that, how you price it. If you fix your foundation issues or you don't fix your foundation issues, right? So there's going to be a different price point based upon the condition of the property. But there are a lot of investors out there that don't care and they'll gladly buy your house with foundation issues. And it's crazy. I had a I had an investor type property that I listed um, not that long ago. It was as is. It needed so much work. I mean, it's just a huge laundry list. So obviously it was sold as is. Um, they were both moving to assisted living. They weren't going to deal with any of that. Um, and I, of course, I got multiple offers with escalation clauses. It went higher than anyone on my team thought it would. So don't be afraid um, if you have a property that needs a lot of work and you just don't have the desire, the means to correct those issues. It will still sell in today's market. Yeah, and I think um, go ahead, that's Tana. what comes down to consulting with each and every client because you know, everybody's in a different space. Um, they have a different level of interest. Um, you know, I'm currently working, I'm gonna be putting up a, a sale, it's an estate sale, um, and the there are three children, and they're looking to maximize, you know, their, their sale, um, but they don't have money to come up front to pay for really anything to get the house ready. So, you know, we, we play with numbers, you know, and we play with what, what the market is currently doing around them to determine how to list it. And it's, it's not that easy in this market because there aren't a lot of comparables to really look, look at and compare sometimes, depending on the location of that property. But, you know, they're selling it as is. Um, they're not going to, you know, they've never lived in the house. They really can't disclose. They don't know anything about the working systems. So, but if you know that there's our issues and you want to sell it as is, you just disclose it, like Karen said. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Let's go ahead and move on. Okay, great. So this slide, we just wanted to show you, um, this is our team. This is our circle of support. Um, we've got team managers that work in our office that are really just the backbone of everything they do. They keep everything in order. Um, they take care of all the details so we can, Don and I can go out and do what we do best. And, you know, we just wanted to say that I'm sure that you all have your own circle of support um, that we will work with, whether, you know, it's your spouse, siblings, parents, adult children, um, we'll all work together. Um, a lot of times I'll have clients that, um, uh, you know, maybe older clients aren't that comfortable with email. And so maybe, uh, you know, we'll need to have a power of attorney for one of their adult children to help sign paperwork quickly. Um, you know, we can arrange to do that. So 
whatever the needs are, we are there to, to work with your whole team. Um, if you've purchased another home, um, we can coordinate with the agent on the other end. So the buy and sell line up smoothly. If you're going to a care facility, we can talk to the sales representative there and again, make sure that it's a smooth transition. Yeah, and I think you said you know, we can we can certainly if there there are elderly people who don't use email, you know we're happy to meet in person and sit down and do that together. Mm -hmm. Right, and um, our platinum plan partners, you know we just wanted to show you um, if you need any of these services, we've got you covered. So um, we've got, uh, you know, like we mentioned, we've got a couple renovation companies. So these are team members of ours. Um, Rocky is on the left and Maria is on the right, and they both have renovation companies that we can help you with. Um, Allison Stanton, I think she also is a is a partner with Elville. She's a geriatric care manager. Um, if you or anyone, your one of your loved ones needs help with just the whole process, um, she can come in and help you know, with placement and care and all the other um, arrangements that would need to be made in addition to the sale of real estate, uh, which we'll do. Yeah. So Maria on the top right is one of um, our team members who owns a uh, renovation company. The, the picture or the example of the clients I had that sold and moved to North Carolina they they came in and did the work they're the ones that i think it's a great option for people who don't have finances up front when they're interested in making renovations they can pay they can defer the payment and pay at time of settlement it comes out of the proceeds of the sale and then um nick underneath her um he's with vertical connections um they take care of we partnered with them to do flooring and all kinds of um, other improvements to your to your home. So whatever your needs are, um, we can coordinate our partners and get that handled. Yeah. Um, yeah. So again, just the the summary of all the things that our platinum program can offer um, with decluttering, organizing, donating or selling items, um, get rid of getting rid of stuff. Um, the, like Donna said, your pay at settlement renovation option, um, that's always going to be just a little bit more expensive. So it just depends on what your needs are. You know, if, um, if you have the money up front um, to pay, it's going to, in the end, cost a little bit less. But if you don't, like Donna said, her clients, <laughs> they, they profited a lot more than they thought by doing it that way, even paying a little bit more for their services. Yeah, they had a project manager too. Like we held them accountable to make sure that the work was done and done on time. So we could schedule, you know, when they were going to go into a coming soon status versus going live on market. But I think, um, you know, if you're planning to sell or downsize, you know, our goal is to make that process as easy and stress-free as possible, you know, for you. So I think that that's the message here. You know, it's about helping our clients take on a very big uh, process and have somebody just help guide them and consult with them through it. So, yeah. Great. So we um, appreciate you letting us talk to you today. We're ready to help you, ready to advise you on, you know, whatever your, your plans are. Um, we wanted to thank you, Jeff, for having us. And if you guys have any more questions, we are here to answer them for you. Well, thank you. Um, we do have some more questions and uh, just want to thank you for your your thoughts and your presentation today. Um, it's been a pleasure working with you to get this up and running in the last few weeks. Um, your your knowledge just shines through in your presentation and your your words and your responses to your questions and you're obviously a great advocate for your clients um so thank you very much so thank you. let's tackle a few more questions here and um we'll go from there so uh, first question um is it possible to first do virtual showings and then only do more walkthroughs with more serious buyers Are you, do you mean if you're a buyer or a seller 
I think we'll probably have to get some clarification on that. Um, let's see here. But the answer is yes. Uh, you know, as the seller, it's your home and you can decide upon what type of showings you want, when you want them, um, how you want them to be done. I mean, you know, I think the idea when you're putting, when you're selling your home is to make it as marketable as possible and as open as possible for as many possible people to see, um, because that's going to help you get under contract quicker. But ultimately, it's your property and it's your your rules. Um, you know, we're bringing you the information and you decide how you want to have it shown and how you want it to go. Now for our listings, we have the ability to do a 3D tour. Um, so people do have that option. Um, now that's not gonna be on every listing. That's why I asked if you're a buyer or a seller because you're not gonna be able to do that on every home that you would like to look at. But we provide that on our listings. Okay. Uh, does your team advise about the outside of the house and landscaping? Yes. Yep, and we also have landscapers that we can bring in to, um, you know, if you need any of the work done, um, we can recommend those professionals to you. Okay. My house needs insulation. Windows were replaced in 2005, but were not installed well, and cold air leaks around them. Is it worth the cost of having it made energy efficient? I think it's a it's a bigger question. And I think I, I personally would love to see the home mm -hmm. um, and understand what your plan is, like moving forward. Um, if there's cold air coming in or hot air coming in around those windows, um, you know, I think it might be worth having a contractor look at it and determine what the cost for, um, for uh, taking care of it is and how that feels to you, what that means to you as a seller. Um, there were insulation problems, and what was the other thing? Let's see here. My larger home, I'm sorry, um, says my house needs insulation. Windows were replaced in 2005, but were not installed well. Cold air leaks around them. Is it worth the cost of having it made energy efficient? It, it depends on the cost. You know, I mean, I think it's worth uh, exploring. If you know that it's not been done right and the insulation isn't good, you know, let's find out what it would cost to have that those windows insulated properly. Mm -hmm. okay. And whether you can pay for that on the way out versus, you know, um, up front. Right. Okay, next question. Is there any house swapping going on? My larger home might be attractive to a growing family while I might like a smaller home? That's an amazing question. I had that happen to me, Karen. Really? I did, I did. It, it was oh my years God. Ago and it, was, it was years ago and it was in my neighborhood. So it was really very interesting. One neighbor wanted a pool and the other didn't care and they swapped. But that's, I mean, I think that's a great, thought um, and I think it can happen um, and I think it, it could be up to both the client and their realtor to maybe you know put out the ask like remember Rocky put out I mean we can go into a neighborhood and, and say you know we're looking to downsize my clients looking to downsize um, and they also have a property to sell I mean it's all in how you you know explore that opportunity but it can happen it's not the norm <laughs> right. right it is unusual are there any new over 55 communities coming up around the clarksville or columbia area yep there's i know there's one coming in maple lawn starting yep. in the 700s um i believe there's going to be some in the marriottsville area coming up as well yep. um that haven't begun yet. I mean, they're, the, the land is there, they're looking for the builder, um, but we try to keep our eyes on, on that. Mm -hmm. 
No, there's the ones I know of as well. Next question, what is a reasonable closing time after an offer is made? It depends on the on the terms of the loan, if they're taking out a loan. Um, but typically, it, you can look at about 30, 30 to right. 35 30 days. days. Right. If they're taking out a loan, yeah. Okay. Do these renovation companies have frequent reviews, and are you very happy with their quality of their work? And yes. are they reasonably priced? <laughs> That's a subjective question about reasonably priced. Um, because, you know, right now, I think we were talking earlier, right, Jeff, about your bathroom reno or your kitchen renovation that you want to do, and you were yes. in super shock <laughs> on the price. A little um, bit. Yep. The price of materials have gone up substantially. So, what you think is expensive you know based on what is the average cost of making a renovation right now could be very different um i totally feel comfortable we only recommend licensed contractors um but i i feel very comfortable with the contractors that we use and we recommend mm -hmm. but yeah the cost of everything has gone up the cost um you know to getting permits has gone up you know, in addition to getting materials. So, you know, unfortunately, everything has right now. Um, that's why, you know, we were saying that um, it's a great option for you to be able to pay after renovation, but you're going to end up paying a little bit more. So if you're planning on staying in your home, um, you know, then you might want to take out like a home equity loan or, you know, something where you could pay like the cash up front. And in the end, it would be a little bit cheaper. Okay. And, um, Side question, is the slide copy available? Um, so just a brief uh, thought about that. So uh, I typically, as you probably know, do send out the slide copies. Um, we tried to, to get this sent out earlier, but the file was very, very large and um, I couldn't get it um, to send um, or have it sent over from Donna and Karen. So we are gonna try to work on that. Uh, and if it's at all possible to get the slides uh, sent over to you, our attendees, uh, we will make it happen. So hang in there with us and uh, we will do our very best as uh, I'm sure you know we will. So thank you for the question. Uh, okay, looks like we have a couple more questions um, and now would be your time to get those last questions in uh, if you haven't already. Um, so uh, let's see here. Our outside landscaping reflects sensitivity to conservation, pollinators, native plants, but does require some care and perhaps some discerning eyes. Are there customers who appreciate that or is that a negative? I think absolutely there are people that appreciate that. Um, and I think that's something that we would point out in the details of your listing. Sure. Yeah. Absolutely. I would like that. Sounds yeah, good and if, if there's yeah. any like special care, you know, that that's unusual, then we would definitely add that information in for the buyer. You know, if, if they're not really sure how to take care of something like that, providing all that information is incredibly helpful. Yeah, I see pictures, beautiful pictures <laughs> and, uh, you know, information about the landscape. Mm -hmm to put up on our listing right a yeah. uh, good question here if you have a cat or a bird in my case a house rabbit what should you do when the house is being viewed with that house pet is this a rabbit that roams around the house free that would be so cute i would love that however <laughs> it might be difficult you know for some for somebody else so I would say, and usually I tell this with people that have dogs too, um, if there's a way for you to um, have your pet go stay with somebody else while your house is on the market, that's always the best thing. So there's nothing interfering with the showings. Um, and also some people have allergies, so that could be a deterrent. Um, so that that's always ideal if that's a possibility for you. If it's not, then if you could, I guess the next best thing would be to create your pet, um, if that's possible. Yeah, I would I would agree with that. And um, actually, so I had a young couple with a, a young son, 
um, we just put their house on the market and they they went to stay with their parents for uh, for the weekend, for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And by Monday, we were under contract. In this market, if you can take a little mini vacation or go stay with a friend, um, you know, it takes a lot of the stress out of your life because people are scheduling showings and, you know, maybe right. you're doing an open house and you certainly don't want people, you don't want to have to go in and out, in and out and try to plan your, you know, daily living around all these showings. So. Yeah, you're going to get the most amount of showings as soon as your house goes on the market. So plan on that the first few days to just be gone um, so people can openly schedule those showings and don't have to you know, wait for appointments. Yeah. And like Donna was saying earlier in our presentation, that if you don't get flooded with showings in those first few days, there's something wrong and it's probably the price. Okay, and a couple final questions here as we wrap up. Um, do you work in Prince George's County and deal with condos? Absolutely, yes and yes. I have a property in Prince George's County, a rental property too. So I, you know, I'm familiar with that area. Okay. And last question, it appears, are solar panels a plus or minus? Oh, I can take that, Karen. I can take that question. So I believe in renewable energy and I think it's fantastic. The, the problem I have are some of the companies and their leases and how they, they work. Um, I recently had a property that I had the buyers on and when we did our inspection, we found out that the roof was beyond its life use. Um, and there were solar panels. And so the seller said, oh, it's no big deal. They just take the panels off and then put them back on when you get your, your new roof put on. Um, they had just put the panels up like, you know, less than a year ago. So the, this particular solar company put panels on a roof that was beyond its life use. Um, and that, to me, was just not a good business practice. Mm -hmm. um, the cost for pulling those panels off and putting them back on were much more expensive than what the seller had stated. Um, I just think it's important that you understand what you're getting into. If the, if the solar panels are um, owned versus right. being leased, if they're being leased, you as the buyer have to take on the cost of that um, and all the, you know, pieces regarding the upkeep and maintenance of them. Um, so it's not that I don't believe in renewable energy. I just think there's a lot to look at. Um, and people are, um, I think it's still, people are being educated more and more about the leases when they're being leased and how they work. Do you have anything to add to that, Karen? No, you said it all. That's great feedback. Thank you. All right. Well, I think that rounds out our questions, um, and we are up against uh, almost 11 o'clock. Um, a reminder, uh, thank you for being here today. Um, our webinar series moves forward. Um, Friday, we have Understanding a State and Trust Administration, which we do on a quarterly basis with Steve Elville. Tuesday the 26th, we have VA Aid in Attendance with our senior principal, Lindsay Moss. And then the last one I'll mention for right now, we have a busy May, so check out our events calendar on our website. Tuesday, May 3rd um, at 10 o'clock, we have a caregiver panel that is being led by um, our aging life care manager uh, who works with us very closely, Ellen Platt. Um, and we're really looking forward to this. We've never done a caregiver panel before and I um, think it's going to be really uh, insightful. So um, look forward to hosting you there. Also, I'll send out some information in my follow-up message to everybody about our annual client event on May 21st, Saturday, May 21st, 8.30 to noon. Um, all are welcome, even though it's a client event. Uh, we haven't had one in a couple of years, and we want to open it up to everybody. 
it's going to be the place to be and we really are looking forward to it it's going to be fun a lot of information a lot of um food award-winning food um some live music um from some special guests mm -hmm. and um i'm going to be emceeing the event so it's going to be a lot of fun so looking forward to it i uh, hope you can be there with us to celebrate and be in person uh, over at the ten oaks ballroom in clarksville so awesome. with all that said donna and karen thank you so much thank great you. job um thank you to our attendees for some great questions and um really appreciate your participation and attendance and we look forward to seeing you again on the elville webinar series have a great day everybody and we'll see you soon thank hey. you bye bye, bye.